Um, so anyway, now we're going to go to the, the, the next part, which is uh, the eighth day of the Hijjah. So again, after you finish your Umrah, you, everything is halal for you at that point. Uh, you're going to just prepare yourself mentally, psychologically, spiritually, emotionally, physically for the Hajj. On the eighth day of the Hijjah, you will repeat all of the sunnahs that you did for Ihram and Umrah and you will declare your intention for Hajj wherever you are. You don't have to go anywhere from your own room, okay, your own apartment, your own hotel, wherever it is that you are. You declare your intention. You say, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَجْ Okay, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَجْ And if you're, if you're doing it on behalf of someone, then just like for Umrah, لَبَّيْكَ اللَّهُمَّ بِحَجْنْ عَنْ فُلَانْ On behalf of so-and-so. Okay, now, Ideally, listen very closely to this part. Ideally, you reach Mina on the same day during the daytime. But with traffic, you might not get there till nighttime, and that's okay. Okay, so if you don't get there till nighttime, it's okay. If your agency finds a way to get there during the daytime, alhamdulillah, but it's not a requirement in any way, shape, or form uh, to get there on the, on the daytime. In fact, spending the night in Mina as a whole is a sunnah. Spending the night in Mina is a sunnah. When you reach Mina, you will pray all prayers with Qasr, not Jama'ah. Shortened, but not joined. Dhuhr, Asr, and Isha will be two rak'ahs. Okay? You will pray them all, but you will pray them at their, at their time. So you cannot join any prayers. Uh, the main thing you want to do on Mina is you want to try to get a good night's sleep. Because tomorrow is the biggest day of your life. And that's the day of Arafah. So you want to make sure that you get your, you get a good night's sleep. Don't stay up that night. It's not even from the Sunnah to pray Qiyam al that night. You know, just to show you the emphasis. So on that night, the, the night of the 8th, you want to sleep well because the next day is Arafah. Um, some important notes, bathrooms are going to be terrible for the rest of Hajj. Try to avoid foods that are going to make you go. Don't, you know, take something to hold your stomach if you want. Don't take the opposite. A lot of people accidentally take laxatives. Don't just get anything from the pharmacy that's good for stomach. A lot of people end up having diarrhea, which is the opposite of what, which is exactly what you don't want to have. But try to eat foods that are not going to make you go, even with the buffets that are going to be provided and the food that's going to be provided. It is better for you, any food that's going to make you use the restroom, it's better to avoid those foods. Uh, the other important note, memorize your tent number in Mina. You, you're going to get lost a few times in Mina possibly. You know, we'll try at least our group, inshallah, we'll try, your group should do this. We try, we'll try. we always try to go together to do all of the rituals, but still, you might get lost in the crowd. So you need to know your tent number because no one's going to be helpful. I'm just explaining, when you get lost in Hajj and you ask someone a question, they're just going to point in any direction that comes, they're just going to point this way. And you're going to end up all over the place. So you need to at least, you need to always have your ID badge. Always, no matter what, have your ID badge and know your tent number in Mina just in case you get lost. On the ninth day of the Hijjah, you depart from Mina uh, for Arafah, hopefully getting there before Dhuhr. Again, you might not get there before Dhuhr. Inshallah, we hope we will get there uh, before Dhuhr. Uh, sometimes you might go very, very, very early. Okay, so we might leave like before Fajr. Uh, my group last year we left at 3 a.m. The reason being, it's just more practical. You get there, you can sleep a little bit. That way, when you can wake up for Dhuhr, and then you can witness Arafah the proper way. So going early is a good thing. But if you cannot get there before Dhuhr because of traffic, don't panic. It's okay. Um, so the, ideally, you want to get there before Dhuhr. There, you will pray Dhuhr and Asr combined and shortened with Jama' and with Qasr. Okay? Asr, Dhuhr and Asr will be prayed together, combined and shortened. Um, I, I'm telling you from experience, please listen to me. Do not try to go to the masjid. Do not try. You are going to regret it. You're going to waste an hour of your life, seriously, the most important day of your life, just trying to get in and out of the crowd. You won't even get there. Last time we got there at 3 a.m., we went to the masjid at 9 a.m. We just got stuck in the crowd and we got turned away and had to come back. So you don't try to go to Masjid Namira while you're there in Arafah. Just stay in your, in your area or else you're going to just waste precious time. Okay? Um, also, uh, during these times, there are people that play cards, there are people that smoke hookah, there are people that do everything that they're not supposed to be doing. 
There are people that just sit around and socialize. There are people that sleep the entire day of Arafah. I'm telling you, people that sleep the entire day in their comfortable tents and there's going to be food and everything like that. Do not waste your time socializing. You can socialize in Mina, and you will need to socialize in Mina. Okay? But in Arafah, for those hours, Dhuhr and Asr, do not waste your time socializing with anybody. Okay, just take your, even if you're all, in a tent all together, you know, you have to respectfully tell people, I have to do my du'a now. Don't waste, don't waste your time. Brother Sayyid Rahman, Brother Sayyid, your mother is waiting for you. Okay. Jazakallah. Uh, the second, now, don't be fooled by a guide and be led to a special place. Stay close to your tent so that you don't get lost. There is no significance whatsoever to Jabal al-Rahman. Nothing from the Sunnah that indicates that being du'a on Jabal al-Rahman is better than du'a anywhere else. Don't try to go to some mountain. Look, you, people will try to fool you while you're there and say, this is the house of Abu Bakr, and this is the house of Umar, and this is this mountain, this is that mountain, so that they can get some money out of you. Just stay close to your tent. Just find a, a, a place where you can make du'a for the entire day. Um, it doesn't matter where you are during that day. There will be a khutbah on that day. Okay, so listen carefully during the khutbah of Arafah, and don't talk during it, although it's not like the Jum'ah khutbah. Uh, but it's sunnah, so you want to again try to, you know, try to listen, take advantage of the khutbah on Arafah, and each each group will have their own khutbah. So there will be the main khutbah going on in the in the in the masjid, and each group will have their own khatib that will be doing the khutbah. So listen closely to your own khatib. And the Prophet ﷺ said, the best thing I and the prophets have said on the eve of Arafah is La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la. All of the Prophets made this dua. And Arafah was something for all of the Prophets and the Sunnah of all of the Prophets. This is the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took the original covenant from us. And us to be am I not am I not your Lord? This is the place. So that is the day, again, that, that moment you want to make the best dua, make that dua as much as you can. There is no basis in the Sunnah for congregational or group dua on that day. So make it personal. Make du'a in your own language. I'm telling you, don't sit there and try to read a book. Make du'a in your own language. This, pour your heart out for these few hours. It's the most important day of your life. This is the day you'll be forgiven for all of your sins, inshallah. The most important day of your life. So make your own personal du'a in your own language. Uh, don't look for someone who's making a very fancy du'a and a poetic du'a so you can go and, and join him. There will be people doing that. Just make your own du'a. Um, also, so then we will leave for Muzdarifah after the sun sets. If you can walk, then you can do so if you want to, or we can take the bus. We'll see inshallah ta'ala when we're there. Will we take the bus yet or we walk? We'll take the bus inshallah. Okay, so we'll take the bus inshallah ta'ala uh, for Muzdarifah. We'll pray both Maghrib and Isha in Muzdarifah, joined and combined. The sunnah is actually to delay Maghrib until Isha time, Jama'a Ta'khir. So don't panic if you're not getting there before Isha time. So the sunnah, again, is to pray Maghrib and Isha at the time of Isha, late, uh, combined, and of course, the Isha will be shortened. The sunnah on that night is not to pray any qiyam, only witr, uh, after the Isha fard. Okay, the Prophet ﷺ did not neglect witr then. Why? Because, again, you're, 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 you need to get your sleep for the next day. The next day is the day of Eid. Uh, here you can, and, I, and, and again, underline, can. You can collect the stones for the jamarat. You don't have to. You can collect the stones for throwing. You don't have to. It's not necessarily sunnah. It's just convenient if you, you know, to collect your stones there sometimes, or you can just collect them at Mina. There's plenty of stones around. You don't have to worry. Um, the, the stones that you're going to need for the next day, you're going to need about 80 small-sized, hummus sized uh, stones. It doesn't matter if you hit the shaitan with a stone. This, it's not going to hurt him anymore. This is not. It's symbolic in its nature. So don't try to get big stones. You don't need to wash the stones. Some people wash them. You don't need to wash the stones. Just pick up stones, small stones that, you're, that you can pelt the jamarat with. You can do that here. Um, but again, the sunnah here is to try to sleep. No matter what you, pa what, you what, uh, what package you're with, everyone was studying to sleep on the ground outside. This is where the small yoga mat comes in handy if you have that. Now the next day is the day, is the day, okay? The 10th day of the hijjah. Anyone have any questions, by the way? You can interrupt me anytime. Yes. We'll get to that, so yeah. But yes. How much is the discount between Arafah and where? 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 Arafah and where?
Jonathan was there was what, three miles? Three miles. Three kilometers? Three miles. Yeah, you can get lost easily, honestly. I wouldn't I would only recommend that for someone who's extremely experienced, to be honest with you. Yeah. So just take the bus. Yes, you can you can keep changing your helm over and over again. It's fine. You can take multiple helms. Sisters, any questions so far? Yes, sister. The sleeping bag, yes, but you don't want anything, again, that's going to fit your body. That's the thing. Just to stay out of a doubtful matter. Anyone else? And it's, kind of, it's just going to be kind of hard to carry around a sleeping bag anywhere in that time. Okay, so let's continue, inshallah, the 10th day of the Hijjah. You will pray Fajr at the beginning of its time, as soon as Fajr comes in. It is permissible for the women, the elderly, and the sick to leave before Fajr to avoid the crowd. If the group decides to do this, we should follow. Okay, so some groups will leave before Fajr, considering if they have a large, again, just logistically speaking, if you have a lot of elderly people or a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of uh, women or sick people, uh, you can leave before Fajr. Uh, so that that but ideally it's better to leave after Fajr, okay? You'll then depart to Mina. And by the way, here you can do things out of order. The things that you do on the tenth of the Hijjah, keep this in mind, they can be done out of order. They don't have to be done this, then this, then this, then that. Okay, so you can do talaf and ifada before you do the jabrat. Okay, you can do these different things, you can do them out of order, so just follow your group at that point. Uh well, we would then go to Mina to stone Jamratul Aqaba with seven stones. Jamratul Aqaba, you're going to see three Jamrat, three pillars. Don't stone the first two, just the third one. Just the third one. Okay, you're going to stone it with just seven stones. All you say is Allahu Akbar with each stone. Okay, you can say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar with each stone. And that's it. The stone, again, small stone. You don't have to pelt, you don't have to pelt it. Uh, there is, mashallah, this used to be the most dangerous part of Hajj. Now it's easy because there's so many floors now, alhamdulillah. So so many floors. Now I'm going to recommend something to you. And, and if if you take my advice, you'll be happy that you did. When you get to any of the jamarats, okay? So imagine that you're walking this way and here's a jamarat, okay? Does anyone want to be shaitan right now? So I can play my jamarat on this <laughs> All right. Here's the jamarat. When you walk, what do people tend to do right away? Attack. If you walk around that crowd and you just come right around them, you can get right in front of it with no problem whatsoever. It works every time. Because people get excited and so the whole crowd just goes this way. If you just walk around, you will walk right up to the Jamarat and stone it with no problem whatsoever. If you're tall like me, if you're in a crowd, you're going to get hit in the head by someone else's rocks. All right? So just walk around, avoid the rush, inshallah, it's much easier. So again, walk around the crowd every single time. It works every time. Go towards the end of the jamra, stone it seven times on the first day, and move. Um, it can be done any time after sunrise, preferably noon, okay? The animal will be sacrificed, again, as your coupon, your, your coupon will stay. Now you can go, you can shave, you can cut your hair, you can take a shower, exit ihram, you can wear perfume. You need to get two out of three done. So even you, you can do this before tawaf and ifadah. If you do tawaf and you haven't done the stoning yet, you can still shave your head, get out of ihram. All right. So as long as you get two out of three done, you can shave and you you can get out of ihram. All right. But usually, I think we will probably do the jamra before tawaf and ifadah. Right? Yeah. It's more it's easier to do the, the stoning. Then that way you can get out of your ihram and you can do the tawaf. Uh, whenever you want over the next three days. You can try to look at, you can try to analyze the crowd and see when you're going to go and do the tawaf. But now again, you get, you get out of that. Uh, so we'll head to Mecca sometime that day or soon after to do tawaf al ifada. Uh, this is a rukun of hajj. So Arafah is a rukun, is a major pillar. Okay? Tawaf al ifada is a pillar. Okay? You have to do these things. You cannot skip tawaf al ifada. Uh, the man and the woman must observe this. It is the same way as the first tawaf, but you don't uncover the shoulder and you don't run in the first three circuits. If you did tamattur, which we will do, you will also do sa'i for hajj. 
Okay? If you did tamattu', you will also do a sa'i for hajj. Again, it can be the 10th, the 11th, the 12th, the 13th, it's fine. So you will, we'll just look at the crowd and we'll try to see then what's the best time to go. Yeah? What is sa'i? Sa'i is between Safa and Marwa. Yeah, just the part between Safa and Marwa. So the Prophet Sallallahu this is in Bukhari, he allowed for any sequence of these events on the 10th of the Hijjah. An important note, and I have to mention it, what about the sisters that are menstruating? There's a lot of, a lot of difference of opinion here. Okay, so when I give my opinion, even the other, the other shiuch, other imams might, might differ with me on this opinion about what you're supposed to do here. Now ideally, back then, you would just wait and, because you can just come back and do it any time. But in this situation, obviously, you've just got to follow the group. If, if it's going to end before the 13th of the Hijjah, then problem is solved. If you don't think it's going to end before the 13th, then it is permissible, in my opinion, to take medicine to prevent them from coming at that time because this is a rukun of Hajj, this is a pillar of Hajj. Again, there's difference of opinion here. That is my opinion, and a lot of fuqaha hold that opinion, a lot of scholars hold that opinion. You can take medicine to prevent your menses at that time if that is the time. Uh, if it's going to fall in that window because you cannot miss that and come back later, your hajj is invalid if you miss the law you follow. Okay? Now, any questions there before the 11th and the 13th? Yes, sister. Who is the The stoning the jamarat? These are the places where Ibrahim السلام, and his family was tempted by shaitan. Did Sheikh Yasser cover this in his class with him? About the jamarat? Okay. So the Jamarat were the places when Ibrahim was going to sacrifice his son, Shaytan arose and tempted him and his family, tried to talk them out of it. And Ibrahim stoned him. So it's from the same, so it's symbolic that we're doing like Ibrahim and stoning. So it's not, we don't believe Shaytan is there, but it's symbolic that, the same way that Ibrahim did. Okay. Other questions? Yes. <coughs> Um, usually the group leader will be in touch with the one who's doing the sacrifice and he will let them know. So if not, then, it's, then he'll give an approximate time at least. The guy who's sacrificing will give an approximate time. How does that work? In our group, we actually have somebody call us on the phone and tell us. MashaAllah. So some groups, our group, Hidal Hajj, will have someone call us and tell us that this sacrifice has been done. Usually they'll give you an approximate time. So you just wait to be on the safe side. Like usually they'll tell you we'll sacrifice at 9 a.m. or 10 a.m. So you wait till 11 and you'll be on the safe side then. Any other questions before we go to the next part? Alhamdulillah, we're getting done quickly. We'll be done inshallah. And I want you to, I want you to ask your questions. I took a lot of time, I guess, because I really want to be thorough as possible so that you're not lost inshallah. Yeah. That's the 11th through the 13th of the Hijjah. Aqaba is al kubra So the first one is al kubra No, it goes from smallest to largest. Okay. All right, so let's continue, inshallah. The 11th through the 13th of the Hijjah. This entire time will be in Mina. Every day, this is what you do. Every single day, you will stone the three Jamarat, each with seven stones. So you need how many stones every day? 21. You need 21 rocks every single day. Seven for each of the jamarat. Okay, by the way, uh, you can just take a water bottle. That's what I always do and fill up your water bottle with all the stones. Okay, just, some, just any regular bottle, you can just throw your stones in there. So that way, when you're there, you can just pour them out. Okay, so you need 21 stones each day. You will stop at each one, seven stones each. Most people waste time in Minna and get bored. Nasheed festivals, parties, birthday parties. There's <laughs> 11th of the Hijjah. I'm telling you, last year, 11th of the Hijjah, there was this big, like, sheikh, not like a sheikh, like, like an imam, like a like Hindu guru type sheikh, who his birthday was on the 11th of the Hijjah, and they were singing happy birthday to you. And it was rocking the entire tents in the VIP section, the happy birthday song. So people do a lot of weird stuff in Minna. They're bored. People are bored in Minna. They eat all day and just sit around and talk and socialize. Mina is a time Allah says remember Allah on these days make frequent dhikr on these days sit with yourself, remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we'll have frequent halaqat so I'll be doing halaqas in my group at least inshallah we'll try to also coordinate with some other imams there are halaqat going on in, in Mina 
but keep yourself busy and engaged in Shalom good and you can also socialize just don't be excessive so you can socialize in minute. you can take time you can sit with each other it's fine but just don't be excessive okay um, it's not sunnah to go to Mecca during this time. So a lot of people, again, because they're bored, they just try to find like cabs and try to find their ways to Mecca. And they get lost every single year. People will get lost going to Mecca. It's not sunnah to leave Mina and go to Mecca during the days of, of Tashrif, Ayyam Tashrif. Sunnah to sit there and remember Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Yes, it, it, you can get bored, but a person who's 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 you know thinking about their purpose and why they're there will not get bored, inshallah. Just read as much Quran, socialize to where you, you're satisfied, and then attend the halaqat and do your dhikr, inshallah. Um, if you leave before, uh, so inshallah, like our group will have apartments, if you need to leave to shisha or those types of things, at sometimes to rest, uh, to take a shower in the clean bathrooms, we'll be in walking distance of our apartments, inshallah. Not all groups will have that, very few groups will have that. We'll have apartments, inshallah, you can walk to, take a shower if you need to, because again, the bathrooms are really bad in Mina usually. That's fine, inshallah, but you should be there before the sun before the sun sets so you can spend at least half the night. You have to spend at least half the night in Mina, inshallah. That's required. But again, it's not sunnah to leave in the first place to go to Mecca, to go do Hajj, I mean to go do Umrah, or to go do Tawaf or anything like that. Okay. Then we come to Tawaf al wadaa which is the farewell Tawaf. This can be done any time afterwards, and in fact, now this is a difference of opinion uh, I'm mentioning. Some scholars said it can be combined with Tawaf al Ifadah if you're not returning to Mecca. If you want to do them separately, that's fine. We'll have time to do it separately, inshallah. Um, anyway, uh, so it can be done any time afterwards. Whenever you're leaving Mecca, it should be the last thing that you do in Mecca, meaning no shopping and things of that sort afterwards. The last thing, the last memory you want to have of, of the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Tawaf. Now that doesn't mean that if you stay around and, and you know because someone in your group got lost, you end up praying another salah that you have to go back and redo it, or if you ended up having to eat or something like that. But you should plan on making this your last tawaf. This tawaf al wada is it rukun or is it wajib or is it sunnah? Wajib. Okay. So if you miss it, you offer a sacrifice. If you miss tawaf al wada, you offer a sacrifice. Your hajj is fine. It's not like the law of Ifadah, which is mandatory, rukun. Okay? Um, there is no sa'i with the law of It's just the law. You will just go there and do the law, literally. Uh, Medina. Now, some people doing Medina before, some people doing afterwards. My group is doing Medina before. When you go there, you make the intention to be praying in the Masjid of the Prophet, وسلم, in which the salawats are multiplied by 1,000, right? Um, there's a lot of fabricated ahadith. Al Hafid ibn Hajar rahimahullah, wrote an entire book about the fabricated ahadith about what you're supposed to do in Medina. Right? You're going there to pray in the Masjid of the Prophet. Some of the things you should look for the Rawla, what's called the Rawla, the garden. Rasulullah said, and this is an agreed upon hadith what is between my home and my manbar is a Rawla, a garden from the gardens of paradise. Between the manbar, the pulpit, and the home of the Prophet, which is his grave now. It will be marked by green carpet. Okay? People will be fighting each other, elbowing each other. There is no hadith that mentions any specific act to be done there. Obviously, if you pray there, it's good. I mean, it's a, it's a garden from the gardens of paradise. But don't fight people and get stepped on so that you can find your way into the Rawla. Be considerate of other people. Okay? So if you get in there, don't just hold it on to your spot and say, I'm staying here. Pray your two rakahs, do what you got to do, and leave. Because people are all fighting and, and, and jumping over each other to get on that green carpet. And it's not, that's not the, the intended purpose of it. Um, personal advice. Most people waste Medina in the, in, the, in the marketplace. Most people waste Medina in the marketplace. Medina is the city. You're, this is probably going to be your favorite part of Hajj, although it's not part of Hajj. Medina is just so beautiful, subhanAllah. There's such tranquility. Because the Prophet said, made dua that, Oh Allah, make Medina more beloved to us than you made Mecca to us. And subhanAllah, Medina is just a place when you go there, you just don't want to leave. The people are just, subhanAllah, the descendants of the Ansar. Clearly, they're just, they have a certain, the people in Medina are totally different from the people everywhere else in Saudi Arabia. It's a fact, right? And there's a certain tranquility and peace that comes in Medina. So just appoint one day. You know, this is, this is such a special place. You know, you don't want to waste it. Just every single day going to the marketplace, getting thobes and ambayas tailored here and this and this and that, and shopping for everybody else. Don't shop for anybody else. Just go one day, buy a bunch of cheap perfume, throw it in your suitcase, and that's it. 
Don't waste your time in the marketplace. Most people will do this, okay? One day, not Sunda, but I'm just saying, try to catch janazas from, the, from Medina. This is one of the, dis the distinctions, obviously, Mecca and Medina Hajj, every single Salah, there's janazah, every prayer in Mecca and Medina. Every prayer, multiple janazahs sometimes at a time. Now, brothers, if you want to run and catch the janazah, all right, pray next to the gate of Bilal. Bab Bilal, the gate of Bilal is to the left of the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ. Pray there, as soon as you finish Salah, run <laughs> to the front of the masjid. You'll see the body being carried out over here. You should meet them there. Go in with them to the Bakhir. It's one of the most powerful experiences when you, when you bury a person there. Because in Medina, if you die, you are buried within two hours. One time an Imam, Shaykh al-Maymani rahimahullah, picked, prayed as Imam in Medina, Salat al-Dhuhr, and he was buried at Salat al-Asr, and Janazah was prayed on him in Salat al-Asr. So when you go to Medina and you hear that Janazah, you know every time you hear Janazah, SubhanAllah, and, and you really want to die there anyway, SubhanAllah, you feel that way. You know every time you hear a Salat al-Amwati, rahimahullah, next Salat might be me. Such a powerful experience. You go there, if you can make it to the Baqir, so to the graveyard. The Baqir of the Prophet, the Baqir is right to the left of the masjid. Okay? They have hours where sisters can visit too. Okay? And brothers can go. Fajr and Asr is when the brother, when people are allowed to go in with the body. Fajr and Asr. So again, you pray to the left, to the gate Bilal. Just look for Bab Bilal, the gate of Bilal. Pray your Salah. Walk quickly to the front of the masjid. You will meet them running with the body. And right when the body goes in, they close the door. So try to run with the body if you can. It, it is my favorite thing to do in Medina, subhanAllah. It is such an amazing experience, a real experience if you can do that. Uh, when you pass the grave of the Prophet ﷺ, you will simply say, As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. Okay, and subhanAllah, you can imagine obviously that Rasulullah said, said, Ardullah, that, the, that the, the earth of Allah, the ground of Allah, does not eat the flesh of the prophets of Allah. So the Prophet ﷺ is laying there in flesh. You, the Prophet ﷺ's body is there as he was ﷺ, but of course his soul is in a barzakh, والسلام, in another realm. And we should know, when we say, وسلم, it reaches the Prophet ﷺ wherever we are. Right? Whether you're in Medina in front of his body or whether you're outside of Medina. But it's from the adab, from the, from the manners of the masjid. When you pass by his grave, alayhi salatu wassalam, you should say, As-salamu alayka ya Rasulullah. And you will say, you will see Abu Bakr and Umar uh, right next to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And you will say to them also, Salam. Do not make dua to him. A lot of people do, unfortunately. You will see a lot of, you will see people making dua to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Make dua to Allah. Okay, it's just, Simple, but at the same time, it's important to remind everyone to do that. And this is an authentic hadith from Sa'id ibn Mansur, who said that Rasulullah said, Do not make my grave an a'id, and make salah upon me wherever you are, and it will reach me. Okay, don't make my grave a'id, make salah upon me wherever you are, and it will reach me. So you don't have to keep visiting the Prophet over and over again, like keep getting out the masjid and going back and going back and going back just for the sake of doing so. Or have some people take a list of people, right? He told me to say salam for me. Someone says, hey, make this much salam for me on the Prophet when you see him. Say, you can do it here and it will have the same effect as if I'm standing in front of him in Medina. Because Rasulullah said, clearly connecting the two, don't make my grave a'id, it will reach me wherever you are. Okay, don't make my grave, grave a'id, but still it is obviously a very humbling and powerful experience whenever you do that. It is so amazing the first time you walk by the grave of the Prophet and you just feel that presence, subhanAllah. Uh, it is undoubtedly a, um, a place where you just feel that and Imam Malik rahimahullah, did not used to walk with his shoes in Medina because he said, this is where the Prophet وسلم, used to walk. I might be walking in the same place in the area of the Haram of Medina. He wouldn't even walk with his shoes, subhanAllah, even though he was a teacher there. So obviously recognize where you are. Uh, finishing off just quickly, to do wudu in Medina, and to go, now notice again, to do wudu in Medina, before you leave Medina, and to go to Masjid Al-Quba, the first Masjid of Islam, and pray two rak'ahs is sunnah, and it equals the reward of Umrah. According to the Prophet Sallallahu he used to do it on Saturdays, and inshallah, we will provide a bus, inshallah ta'ala, every group should, 
I provide a bus to pray to it. You'll pray your, you'll do your wudu, and then you'll just go to Masjid al Quba. You pray to an archives. And by the way, they have, subhanAllah, the Imam there, if you get a chance to see him, Shaykh Salah al Maghamsi, subhanAllah, is really one of the most special people in the world. Uh, so it's, it's a very beautiful place, the first Masjid of Islam. Uh, visiting the site of Uhud is also Sunnah, where you, where you see the people like Hamza, and Mus'ab, who died for Islam. And inshallah, I'll explain and your tour guide whoever not tour guide but it is a tour guide but your imam whoever it is should explain to you where how the battle took place and what you will see the, the place that is clearly marked for the graves of Hamza radiallahu anhu Mus'ab and all of the other uh, shuhada of Uhud so it is sunnah to visit and to uh, to make dua for them inshallah Masjid uh, al-Qiblatayn and visiting the date market is something that's an added bonus. There's no sunnah to visiting Masjid al-Qiblatayn, but you can visit it if you have the understanding that it's not sunnah to do so, but just to visit because you're there and to go to the date market. The dates in Medina are absolutely incredible, so you'll get to enjoy those tamar, inshallah, those dates. With that, inshallah, I'll take questions, and I hope you found this beneficial, inshallah ta'ala, and I apologize for taking time. Please keep this with you. If you need another copy, you can talk to Brother Iftikhar, inshallah, he will give that to you. And I want to thank also uh, brothers and sisters from Hilal, Hajj, and Umrah, alhamdulillah, they provided all of this material and all of this, uh, putting all of this together, and, and the brothers and sisters from Valley Ranch. So, are, are they able to ask questions online or not also? No? Okay, don't worry about it. Yes, sister. So you're not gonna. What are the, the question is? What are the types of sacrifices I can offer when you when you make a mistake here in Hajj? You're not gonna have to slaughter anything yourself. You're not gonna. You just there will there will be stations literally where you can pay for a sacrifice. So, the you know a lamb will be sacrificed for you. It'll be one. You know they will take care of it. Inshallah. Are there questions? Yes. Who raised, I don't know who raised their hand first. Is that one for every infraction? Yes, one sacrifice per infraction. Okay. Yes, Is it uh, permissible to use the unscented soap? Or yes, using unscented soap, unscented deodorant, unscented anything is permissible and good, inshallah, that's fine. While using the? While the ihram. Yeah. You can use anything that's unscented, and it's, it's good, it's sanitary. So it's good to do so. Sister okay. James. Then doing the, uh, the deodorant. Deodorant is fine. Unscented is fine. Anything unscented is fine. There's unscented deodorant. There's plenty of that. And there's pharmacies everywhere there too if you forget to bring it. But you can bring your own in shop. Any sisters? Yes. No? I'm sorry. Well, if, uh, does it have to be the 10th or can you do it on the 11th as well? Tawaf and Ifadah can be done 10th, 11th, 12th, and 13th according to some scholars. Um, the ihram will be provided. Those who are going to Medina, they buy. Those who are going to Jeddah, usually provide. Right. So if you're going to Medina, you can buy, you buy in Medina. If you're going to, what's your package? Yeah, I'm not done it yet. I've not done it yet. Are you doing it this year? Yeah. Um, uh, Which pack? Medina first or Mecca first? Medina first. Are you with my package? I want to go with you, but that's the thing you're going to try for us. Okay, inshallah. So if you're going Mecca first, it should be provided, inshallah. Medina first, then you'll buy it in Medina. So your train is Medina first? What's that? My, mine is Medina first. And my package is sold out I think, a long time ago, but so it's not a sales pitch, you know, it's just to help people out, inshallah. Any sisters, questions? Please, brothers, raise your hands, inshallah. Yes. Uh, regarding the tawaf al-wada, if uh, someone goes to Jeddah or outside of Makkah and then they come back again uh, during their visit, uh, do they have to do it before leaving? Or no. They they, well, yeah, they'll do it before leaving Mecca. Okay. So before leaving Mecca to go to Jeddah, you'll do it. And if you happen to come back to Mecca, then it's a whole other visit. Uh, you should only, if something is harmful to you, you should kill it. That's it. Something causing you harm directly. Yes, sister. Uh, does the Akhal Fada require Sari? 
If you did tamattu, then yes. So if you no, even tawaf al ifadah you won't be in ihram. If you did, if you did the sacrifice and you did the rami jamarat, you threw the jamarat. So you want. You. And by the way, recommendation for all of you: uh, when you're doing tawaf outside of ihram, outside of ihram, you can wear a thick pair of socks. It is good for you for walking frequently. You can't do it inside ihram. You can't wear socks. Obviously, in ihram, outside of ihram, though, wear you can buy a thick pair of socks to walk. It's good for your feet. You're going to be walking a lot. So, yes, you will do tawaf and sa'i tawaf al ifadah. Yes? You also said that it can be done any time afterwards. But you also said that it has to be, the ifadah has to be 11, 12, and 13. So, if you're leaving on the 12th, if you're leaving on the 13th, I said, uh, somebody is not leaving on the 13th. Then they have tawaf al ifadah has to be done before the 13th. Tawaf al wada' can, can be is done whenever you're leaving Mecca, period. Yes, brother. Uh, can you explain the starting part of the tawaf? Like uh, how to do the intention and all this? Were you here for the first part? Yeah, it was, but. Uh, you were here b before Maghrib? Yeah, but. We covered it in detail. <laughs> so if you go to, to your page, uh, go to tawaf al qudum. It, it steps one through six, page four. Yes, sister. Is the Hajj ages, do they offer some classes for, for people? Well, this is the class. <laughs> it, seems, it seems like it's difficult. It's not that easy just to go to the Well, I mean, there's plenty of books, obviously, but this is the this is the pre-Hajj class, if you will. But during Hajj, obviously, I will instruct everyone before each step. Again, I'll remind everyone. But yeah. I think we can go ahead and stop, inshallah. It's 10 o'clock. Jazakallah khairan to all of you who attended. SubhanAllah, Muhammad, Ashhadu Allah, Allah, Astaghfirullah, Tawbarik, Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.